And I'm here at Sonnabend Gallery in New York City with the sculptor Rona Pondick. And Rona, I want to hear about the hybrid, the combination of animal and human. Tell me about that. Um, the hybrid image in animal, human, and tree human form has been in my work for quite a while. Um, I started with the animal human hybrid in 98. Uh, the tree came into my work a lot earlier, but the hybrid image joined shortly after that as well. The attraction to the hybrid image is the attraction to an image that's been in history all the way back to the Neolithic time. A very charged, strong, metaphoric image something that I have worked hard to try to make feel not just as though it's in a historical link, but also something that's very much a part of our time. Okay, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more? Does this have anything to do with, with shock value or is, is, it, is this a lot deeper than that? Um, honestly, I'm not sure how to describe the specific content in my work. Um, for a long time, I've had to accept the fact that I work, and I work in a very intuitive way. I go into the studio every day. I make work, and it's a very kind of magical process. Sometimes I myself am surprised, because I don't know where the imagery comes from. I don't know. Um, all the time what it means, when I'm in it, it's very hard for me to talk about it. Sometimes it will take me 10 or 20 years later to actually understand what the actual meaning is in the pieces. Something I'm very, very interested in is subject matter that's very, very suggestive, very metaphoric. Um, imagery that, like Kafka, who's an absolute hero. He embodies in his work both the absurd and the real. Things that are contradictory. Something that's in our life. So and he, we don't know how to explain it. So he, he inspired you to move beyond the realistic. And is that where the fragmentation came in and the use of human limbs on animals? No, the, uh, the fragmentation has been in my work since the mid 80s. Um, the idea of using parts rather than a whole comes from my desire to deal with poetic imagery that's highly suggestive. Um, if you look at something as a whole, as a viewer, you're not as engaged with what you're looking at as much as if you're looking at part of something. And then you have to figure out, what is that part? And the way I'm joining the animal with the human, there are contradictory things happening in terms of materiality, in terms of how you expect to see these things or forms in life. And it makes you question. Um, I don't know about you, but when I come to look at things in, in the world, a lot of times things don't make sense. They seem right, but they may not make sense. Um, I'm honestly always thinking about things that are not just symbolic, and metaphoric, but things that are very representative of what it's like to be alive right now in our time. Interesting, interesting. Tell me, tell me some more, please, about, about your process. Um, my process is a very organic process. I honestly think with my hands. I don't go, oh my god, I have an idea for a piece, and then execute it. Honestly, I'm the kind of artist that if I have an idea, I have enough experience to know not to do it, because it'll probably be horrible as a work of art or just as a sculpture. I really let the work 
evolve. And sometimes pieces will span a two, three, five, or even six year period of time so, in its evolution. So when you start a piece, creating a piece, you're really not sure how it will end up. No. The material that I work in is very, very plastic. It's clay-like. It eventually, in a 24-hour period, turns to a stone-like state. So it's imagine combining Giacometti and Brancusi in terms of process, modeling, carving, and coming together. And when I'm starting a piece, honestly, it can change so much that I know people who have come into the studio, they don't recognize it over a long period of time because it changes that much. Wow. Not just the scale changes mm -hmm. within the internal pieces, but the imagery itself changes a lot. Hmm. Tell me about scale. How do you just determine scale? Um, scale is sculpture. It's what makes sculpture. Um, something that's small. I don't want it to just be small. I want it to feel grand. But something that's large, I don't want to just be huge feeling. I want it to have an intimacy at the same time as being large. The beauty, I think, of sculpture and the way I like to use sculpture is that when you physically encounter it, you feel it within your own body and that you okay. actually have a sense of what it feels like and what you feel like in relationship to it. Now the creatures, the creatures, are they an extension of you? I think every piece of art that every artist makes is an extension of them. Interesting, interesting. Any specific messages that they have for the viewer or no? No, I, I honestly like to layer my work. Um, some artists like to reduce and get it very pared down and reductive. When I'm paring down and making things more exact, I'm putting more and more and more in, but letting it hopefully unfold slowly. So, so this it's is very layered. So this is the psychological layering you're talking about in your work, correct? It's, not, it's form, it's psychological, it all comes together. Hopefully when a piece is resolved, it's hard to dissect any one part and say, well, it's this or that. That it's, it's, it's complicated, that it's not, it's not one dimensional. Hopefully it has a lot more than one dimension to it. And not just because it's a sculpture. Hmm, interesting, interesting. So where are you going from here? I mean, you've got this exhibition now. Mm -hmm. What else? What else is coming down? What, do you, what else are you working on? What's coming down the road? Honestly, when I have, when I'm working in the studio, I will sometimes have 15 sculptures all being worked on at the same time. Oh, interesting. And um, I'm just going to go right back to work in my studio. There are other exhibitions that are coming up that are being planned in, um, other parts of the world, and I'll be getting back to work. Interesting. And you'll stay with the hybrid? Yeah, the, the hybrid is, for me, a just very, very rich. And it is. It's, and it's, they're, they're images that I feel like could really keep me engaged and working probably for the rest of my life. What do you think about the fact that when most people view your sculptures, they're really very t taken aback. They, the range of reaction can be anything from horrified to really entranced. And is that something that you strive to create? Is that something that you, you want that range of reaction from the, from the viewer? Well, I think art is a language. Um, and hopefully it speaks. I don't want someone to look at my work and not think about anything or not feel anything. Um, I'm excited when someone does get very engaged and involved with the imagery. I also know that there's no way to control your viewer. No matter who the viewer is out in the world, it's not possible. 
And something that I have found with my work is that there are people who see the work and they find some elements funny and two seconds later someone will come over and find it disturbing. And I think that's actually quite lovely and fascinating. And I like that. The opening reception is taking place right now, Saturday. The exhibition is through April to 27th. April 27th, I think. So come on down. Thank you so much.